Hey guys, welcome back to Paper Made Me Do It. Today's video is going to be all about Inko Rimo, Inko Rimo, however you pronounce it. I've heard it pronounced both ways on some videos that I watched earlier today. I have some notes to go over with you if you've never heard of Inko Rimo, and then we'll talk a little about um, letter writing supplies. But Inko Rimo, if you can see the um, lettering here, stands for International Correspondence Writing Month. And this is an annual challenge that will be for the entire month of February this year. And it is international. So it is a writing challenge for everyone around the world. And these notes that I printed here are from the Inko Rimo website, which I will link in the description box below. It is inkorimo.org. But in their website, they state that the idea is to send a handwritten letter, card, or note to someone every day during the month of February. It doesn't have to be a novel or even news. It's entirely up to you what you write. And they also state that most people who have participated in this project over the years have found it a rewarding and enjoyable way to be introduced to ideas and people all over the world. And some even continue to write and receive letters beyond the month of February. So while that's obviously not a mandate or a requirement, it sounds like sometimes that has led to a um, almost pen pal type situation. Now this will be my first year to participate. So I can't speak from experience, but I'll share with you the information that I have. And if you've participated in the past, please let me know in the comments whether or not you enjoyed it. Um, did you end up having like prolonged correspondence with new connections or um, who were some of the people that you did write to if you participated in previous years. Now also from the Inka Ramo website, it says that you can add stickers, stamps, drawings, quotations, and poems to your letters or note cards. Pens, pencils, brushes, crayons, the idea is to introduce a little creative fun into every day for at least one month per year. So you can get as creative as you want with your letter writing. It says we have one goal here to encourage an international flurry of letters around the globe during the month of February and hopefully see it extend throughout the year. Together, we have spanned more than 50 countries, 22 time zones and all seven continents. There's even an address book with the names of all of this year's participants. I will say that on their website, when I clicked on the address book link, it brought up an error message that said page not found. So I'm not sure if that was user error on my part or if they're in the process of updating from 2019 to 2020. Really not sure. So if you have any information about that, um, please leave it in the comments as well. But it looks like, um, you know, if it's functioning properly, there should be an address book on their website. The purpose of that being you can actually enter your name and address to be a part of that address book. So I understood it to be a resource where you can search the address book for people who want to participate if you're looking for someone to write to. So these um, couple of things that I'll go over came from an email that I received from Goulet Pins in the US, and I will link their blog post about this in the description box below as well. But they give three tips if you are considering participating this year. Their first tip is to get your writing tools together. Um, I am posting this video in mid-January, but you definitely would want to have all of your supplies gathered and ready to go before February 1st. They suggest paper, ink, pen, sealing wax, stamps. There again, I mean, you could go all out uh, for creativity's sake. However, don't 
let that be something that limits you. If you don't have a lot of stationary goodies and supplies, I think the art of letter writing is almost a lost art these days. And I know that even if I receive a simple handwritten thank you card in the mail, which is pretty much the extent of handwritten uh, correspondence that I receive these days, but even a little handwritten thank you card always makes me smile. So don't feel like you have to go out and purchase um, expensive stationery or additional items to participate in this because the main point is getting a handwritten letter into someone else's mailbox. So theoretically, you could also use just loose leaf paper or a simple notebook and a ballpoint pen, um, regular business envelope. So don't feel like you have to go out and spend a lot of money on this. However, if you are a stationary aficionado and you already have a lot of these things that maybe stay more in storage in your desk and you're not actually using them as much as you'd like, now would be a great time to break it out. Make some really nice handwritten letters to send through the mail. So the second tip that Goulet Pens gives is figure out who you're writing to. Make a list. If you did one letter per day for the month of February, this year is a leap year, so that would be 29 lucky recipients, as they say. And on the blog post, Goulet actually gives their mailing address in case you would like to write a letter to them. We're gonna go over several ideas here in just a minute of who you could write. So we'll go a little deeper into that. And then their third tip is determine when you have time to write letters. So obviously, depending on how simple or how elaborate you go, um, you will need to dedicate some amount of time in the month of February if you'd like to participate in this challenge. It might be five minutes a day, you know, for something quick. If you wanna be a little more elaborate, 10, 15 minutes, what have you. But they do suggest planning in advance what works for you in terms of when you can write your letters. So they give the prompt here, like, will you write one every day, like literally one letter per day, or will you write in batches? So if it works for you to designate five to 15 minutes every morning or every evening to knock out one letter, that's definitely one way to approach it. If that's not uh, feasible or reasonable for you, Maybe you dedicate an hour over the weekend to knock out several letters for the week ahead. So there's no you know, hard, fast rules of when you have to write as long as you get all of your letters mailed out in February and beyond, hopefully. So this image in the middle of this page came from that same Goulet Pens blog post. And I just printed it off and made some of my own notes to expound on it a bit. So Goulet Pens gives you 29 letter writing ideas here in the graphic. And I'll just kind of add my comments. They suggest a parent or a godparent, any relative, honestly. But I added, you know, maybe your spouse, maybe your child or children. A beloved pet. <laughs> no stamp would be required for that, I suppose. Um, some of these suggestions are almost a little um, different in theory, not like an actual letter to a person that you would put a stamp on and post. There's nothing wrong with that, like a letter to your future self, for example. You're not going to mail that, and that would be neat to write, but I love the idea of actually posting and mailing as many letters as possible. Just because, like I said earlier, I know it always makes me smile when I have something that I receive in my mail. So, a member of the armed forces is another suggestion, great suggestion. Someone with a February birthday, a teacher or a former teacher, someone who lives in another state, an old friend. This could be from childhood, high school, college, etc. Maybe the neighborhood that you previously lived in. A resident of a local nursing home. I really, really like that idea. That would be very special to the recipient, I'm sure. Or a patient in the hospital. 
and that could be an adult or a child at a local children's hospital or St. Jude. I did look at the St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Tennessee, their website, and they do give a mailing address for non-donations. So I will list that address in the description box below as well if you would like to write an encouraging letter for a child who may be having a stay at St. Jude. A coworker or a worker bestie, a neighbor or a former neighbor, sibling or cousin, that goes back to any relative, someone who has influenced you in a big way, your garbage man or postal worker, or I guess any like service worker um, would fall under that category, a loved one. Leave a letter of encouragement for someone to find. You could write your favorite artist, musician, athlete, your doctor, your pet's vet, favorite fictional character. That's one of those more idealistic letters. An elected official, grandparents or an elderly friend, someone who's on your mind today, someone that you haven't seen in a long time, your favorite barista or grocery store cashier, current residents of your childhood address, someone you took for granted, someone who helped you achieve a goal, a first responder, letter to your future self, or write to Goulet Pins and then they give you your mailing address. Some others that I thought of would be your pastor or religious leader, maybe a former boss or employer that you admired, the owner of a small business or shop that you like to patron, any of your favorite YouTubers or social media posters who inspire you, maybe some of your favorite IG accounts. And then that was just to remind me to make that comment about the address book on the website. So I'm not sure if I'm, you know, clicking at the wrong spot or not, but the website, the main website is incorimo.org. I'll leave that in the comments as well. There's also a Facebook page dedicated to this event, and the name of the Facebook page is Incorimo. Now, I will say when I clicked on it um, earlier today, it didn't appear to be recently updated. The posts that I saw first pop up were from back in 2017, so that may or may not be a current group, but it does, or I'm sorry, page, but it does exist. Um, there were two Facebook groups that I saw, and I have sent join requests to both of them, but haven't been approved yet by the admin, so I can't um, speak yet to the content of the groups. The first one, which was um, the larger of the two, had over 400 members. It was called Inco Rimo on FB. And then there was another one that I'm assuming was just recently started. It was called Inco Rimo 2020. There were only 18 members in it so far, so it sounds like that's like a brand new group for the upcoming event next month. I noticed there's also an Inco Rimo account that you can follow on Instagram. And there are a couple hashtags that you may wanna use this year if you are an IG poster. Um, Inco Remo has its own hashtag, and then there were hashtags with previous years as well as 2020. So hashtag Inco Remo. There was a you know 2017, 18, 19. There is um, a new hashtag for Inco Remo 2020. So maybe this will get your wheels spinning about you know who you could write during this challenge. And these are an example of some supplies that I'll be using. I have this notepad and the sheets fit into these nice envelopes I bought a while back. They were made by the, I don't see it on here, but I'm almost positive it was like Rifle. Oh no, Monarch, yes, Rifle Paper Co., sorry. <laughs> There's their logo. So Monarch must be like the style design of this print. But these are Rifle Paper Co. envelopes that I'll be using with this um, letter writing paper. This was another Rifle Paper Co. writing set. 
that has been, you know, sitting in my desk drawer. It has matching envelopes and address labels. So I'll be glad to actually put this to use instead of hoarding it. Oh, I'm sorry, um, storing it. That's the right word, isn't it? <laughs> and then this is a washi paper design, Japanese writing set, or not a full set, but writing paper. And I recently, sorry if that sound is annoying, recently purchased two colors of this from Nico Neko. I will link her shop in the description below. But um, this is several sheets of a beautiful kind of semi-sheer washi writing paper. So I got it in kind of the mint green and mustard yellow. I'll be using that for some of my letters next month. And it doesn't have to be a full page. Um, it was mentioned that I think, you know, the overlying point here is handwritten and sent in the mail. So it could be even a small note card. It doesn't have to be a lengthy letter. But I'm excited about this because I love, you know, I'm going to break out some of my favorite um, fountain pens. And I love the underlying concept, being able to use some fun supplies myself and create some letters. And then I love the idea of someone receiving them on their end in their mailbox. So if you would like a letter from me next month, I will leave my email address in the description box below. If you would email me your full name and mailing address, I will do my best to send you a letter next month. Now, if I end up with um, significantly more than 29 requests, um, some of those may have to be notes instead of long letters. I'll do my best to really manage my time next month, but um, I will definitely send letters to the first 29 um, emails that I receive. I do ask when you send your information to please be very clear and accurate in how I need to put your address on the outside of the envelope to ensure that it does get to you because I'm in the US, but this is an international challenge, so I'm not uh, limiting it to US. I will um, post a letter to anywhere in the world, but I'm, you know, really only familiar with the US form of address where we use um, like our name, street address, um, city, state, and then numeric zip code. I mean, that's kind of our format in the U.S. So, for example, if you were in the U.S. and you sent me your name, your address, your city, um, state, and zip kind of connected in one line, I would know how to break that up because that's what I'm familiar with. However, if you are anywhere else in the world, if you send me all of this information in one line, I may not know how to break it up appropriately. So please be sure when you email your information to list your name first and then be sure to return, you know, to a new line and give me exactly what um, format needs to go on the envelope for your address. Because if I write you a letter, I wanna be sure that you do receive it. So if you have any questions or comments about this challenge, leave them in the comments below. And like I say, if you've participated before, let me know what were your favorite parts about it? How did it go? And I'm excited to get ready. I'll uh, be looking forward to writing some letters to you guys. And if you would like to write me back in return, I will put my return address um, on the envelope, but that is not a requirement so please do not feel like I'm expecting return letters if you're not able to participate um, don't feel like you can't leave your information for me if you can't write back 
So you are um, more than welcome to write me back. I would love to hear from you and get some mail in my mailbox, but that's not a requirement to leave me your information, okay? Alrighty, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Y'all have a great rest of the day, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.